Okay, now the webinar is recording. So, hello everyone and thank you for joining this webinar and this is my fourth webinar on Forex boats. But uh, anyway, first I want to introduce myself. Um, you may know that my name is Victor Neustroff and I'm a private trader and uh, I've been trading since 2003, uh, starting with Forex, of course, and then I brought in I broadened my horizons to commodity markets. Now I specialize on agricultural markets. I consider them to be more transparent than any other markets. But uh, I still have a few strategies that work on Forex and I am still trading Forex. Um, so today the topic of our webinar is strategies to exit the market and how long to hold the trade. Uh, yeah, there is one question. If uh, I trade cryptocurrencies, no, currently I don't trade them. Uh, I I just don't know why. Maybe just because I don't know how to earn on cryptocurrencies. I just don't want to buy uh, bitcoins and then hold them. Uh, I, I don't have any strategies that works on cryptocurrencies right now. Okay, there is... Uh, if someone uh, raises his hand, just please uh, write the question and I will definitely answer. Okay. Uh, be sure to read uh, the disclaimer. Uh, okay, by the way, this webinar will be recorded, as I told you, and you may watch it later on forexboard.com. One of the most difficult questions that a trader will ask himself is when to take profits and when to fix losses. This is a very complex issue and it has no correct answer. And today we will try to cover such an interesting issue, when to exit the market and when to recognize that it's time to close the trade, to take a profit or to fix a loss. And uh, of course you may know that everything depends on your strategy. But in this webinar I'm going to explain you a few tricks how to identify that the trend changes and uh, your open trade is unlikely to bring you more profit but can lead to a higher loss. Okay, I will turn on my uh, turn off my camera and uh, we will start our presentation. There is one hand rising Bruno Br Bruno Gallardi wants to uh, Bruno, if you want to ask any questions, just don't hesitate to write them. Okay. This is the plan of our webinar. First, we're going to speak about trading plan. Then uh, I will tell you how to notice the signals to exit the market. And then I will uh, tell you uh, how to find the ideal duration of the trade. And uh, of course, I will answer all your questions. Okay, let's start with a trading plan. Every time when you are preparing to open a trade, the first thing you should think about is your trading plan. You should define your goal, the market you're going to trade, time frames, and you also should think about money management before you open a trade. 
Let's start and I will explain every aspect you should take care of. The first one is your goal. You should define your goal. You can measure it in pips. Uh, for example, your goal is to make uh, 40 pips per week or, for example, 150 pips per month. Uh, another example of a goal can be to make from 5 to 10 percent on your deposit in a month. The next aspect is the market you're going to trade. If you're a forex trader, you should define the currency pair to trade. Uh, for example, you know that your strategy works in major markets like Euro USD, British Pound USD, USD against Swiss franc, or, or USD against Japanese yen. That's why you have to look at these charts and wait until the entry signal will be formed. Okay, there is one question from Jake Smositer. If I have uh, a course on technical trading on Forex Bot or Udemy. Um, I have a few courses on Udemy. Uh, but I'm not sure if it's allowed uh, to me to promote these courses on Forex Boat. Uh, so what I suggest, just to, uh, I will ask this question uh, from Damien, and if he allows me, then I will definitely provide you with the links to my Udemy courses. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, the next aspect is preparation. Before starting your trading day, you should check out the economic calendar of the forex market for the day or a few days, depending on your trading style, and see what news release that could affect the market you are going to trade will be coming out. Uh, the next aspect is time frames you are going to trade. Tell yourself which charts you will be looking at. For example, you can focus on two charts, M15 and daily. You use the daily charts to identify the main trend and the 15 minutes chart to get good and right points for your trades. Mm, the most important aspect is your strategy. Do not open a trade until the try signal is formed. Don't try to outpace the market. Try not to open trades too early. If you believe in your strategy, every time stick to it. For example, uh, for example, if the forex market is showing signs of lack of direction, you will stay out of the market. You won't trade until you see a trend forming. To identify the trend formation, you can use many tools. The most common are resistance support, trend lines and moving averages crossing. Okay, and you should also remember that even though technical analysis is the basin for your trading, you should pay attention to all fundamental data. Uh, as for me, uh, actually, it's not only me who thinks so, but I am absolutely sure that if you trade Forex, your strategy should be based on technical analysis. Uh, if I trade uh, I don't know, agricultural markets, then I should use fundamental analysis. The next aspect of your trading plan is major events. Do not trade when the market is too volatile or unpredictable. It usually happens after some very important news releases like speeches of governors, of central banks or Federal Reserve and uh, every time try to get out of the market before major economic data releases because th there is a high chance that you wouldn't understand what has happened after the release and uh, why the market reaction is so unpredictable. 
the next one is money management rules. Uh, you should try to define your trading lot, and there are two ways to define it. Uh, for example, you can use fixed stop loss. Uh, just just an example. Uh, you can stop your position. Um, okay, I, I mean you can set a stop loss. Uh, up to 100 pips away from the try point. And it means that you allowed yourself to lose these 100 pips. Another option is to start with risking approximately 5% of your total account balance on the trade. And then you can gradually reduce it to 1%. Um, this is what I usually do. Uh, but uh, my risk on the trade is uh, up to two and a half percent. But of course it depends on the account I managed and the amount of the account and uh, 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 my confidence in this trade. But usually it's up to two and a half percent. Okay, and the last aspect and maybe Maybe it is the most important. It is, I, I called it, what if. When you open a trade, you have one or a few scenarios in your mind about what would happen in the market after you open a trade. But you should think about all the scenarios. At least you should suggest three of them. The first one is, what if everything goes well? What will you do in this case? Uh, of course, the simple answer is to close the trade using take profit, but um, it's okay for you to apply another solution according to your trading strategy. The second scenario is what if the market goes in opposite direction? What should you do in this case? If you are just, uh, if you're going just to wait, Define how much time you should wait. Or will you use the stop loss which was set when you, the trade was opened? It doesn't matter what your strategy tells you, just do it and don't change your mind if you believe in your strategy. It's very important. And uh, the third scenario is what if the market is flat? Before you open a trade, make a plan what to do in such a case. Anyway, think about your future actions before you make a trade. In this webinar, I'm going to show you a few tools which can be helpful in this case, if you don't know when to close the trade. And after the webinar, I believe you can implement them into your trading strategy. And the first tool we are going to observe is support and resistance levels. It's a very useful tool. And uh, actually one very popular way to take profit in a successful trade is to put it in an order to close a position when the next support or resistance level is reached. This is one of the easiest ways to exit the market. Of course, as long as you understand support and resistance levels, but I will explain it now. What is support? Uh, support is the price level at which demand is thought to be strong enough to prevent the price from declining further. By the time the price reaches the support level, it is believed that demand will overcome supply and prevent the price from falling below support. Just look at the screen. Now you may see that this is the support level. level. Uh, the, this market won't fall below this level and um, it was confirmed by this minimum. Of course, uh, support does not always hold and a break below support signals that the bears have won out over the bulls and uh, 
a decline below support indicates a new willingness to sell and uh, a lack of incentive to buy. And if the support level is broken, another support level will have to be established. Of course, at a lower level. But uh, according to my experience, usually the price bounces back from the support and resistance levels. That's why I consider them to be a good tool to identify where to close a trade. Okay, where, uh, where is support established? Support levels are usually below the current price. Uh, but uh, it's not uncommon for the market to trade at or near support. For example, if you define that it can be the support level, the current price should be higher than this level. If it's lower, then we can't uh, call it a support. What is a resistance? Resistance is the price level at which selling is said to be strong enough to prevent the price from rising through there. And uh, if the price reaches the resistance level, it is believed that supply will overcome demand and prevent the price from rising above resistance. Like you may see in this chart, there is a resistance level and it was broken and the price continued to rise. Uh, in this moment, uh, the bulls have won out over the bears. That's why the price continued an uptrend. Okay, so where is resistance is established? Uh, usually, resistance levels are usually above the current price. So we can call it a resistance if only the current price is below this level. Uh, what, uh, what else can I say? Uh, sometimes support can be established where the previous reaction lows and reaction, uh, resistance can be established by using the previous reaction highs. That's why sometimes support equals resistance. So support, this is the support level, uh, can turn into resistance and vice versa. So once the price breaks below the support level here, the broken support level can turn into resistance. And yes, we see there is a strong level of resistance. And of course, the resistance also can turn into support. What I want you to learn is that if you are hoping that the market will continue its trend, but you see that there is support or resistance level on the way, close your trade. This level is unlikely to be broken, what means that it's time to close the trade. Uh, okay, so let's finish with support and resistance level and now let's talk about technical indicators which can help you identify the end of the trend or the trend change. All indicators can be divided into four categories. It's trend indicators, momentum indicators, volume indicators, and volatility indicators. So let's start with trend indicators. Uh, this uh, type of indicators helps to recognize the direction of the major trend. And of course, most traders try to gain profit by trading in the trend's direction. Uh, for example, just a simple moving average is a trend indicator. It shows market direction. 
especially if the market is too volatile. But I would recommend you using at least three moving average indicators with three different periods to understand what short-term, medium-term and long-term trends are. Oh yeah, there are a few examples of trend indicators. It's a moving average, uh, MACD, and uh, parabolic SAR. They can all be used to identify a trend. So let me show you. This is uh, parabolic SAR. And uh, you see that there were points below the price. And it meant that there was an uptrend on the market. And now you see there is uh, one point which is higher than um, the highest price of this candle. And it uh, can signal that uh, the, tr the, the trend, the, an uptrend is ended. And by the way, you see that uh, now, uh, I mean, here in this rectangle, the market is in flat. There is no trend in, trend in the market. For example, if you uh, were uh, hoping for an uptrend and you opened a, tra a long trade here, you should close it here on this candle because now you see that the trend is ended. So it's time to close. The next uh, category of indicators is momentum indicators. Uh, we can call them uh, oscillating indicators also, and uh, they are most useful for determining overbought and oversold positions. Uh, they can also be very useful in signaling the start of a new trend or the end of the previous trends. Uh, examples of such indicators include uh, relative strength index, stochastic, and uh, commodity channel index. Let me show you an example. This is stochastic, and uh, it was a downtrend. Uh, for example, you opened a short trade here on this candle. You earned uh, like uh, 100 pips. And then you see that uh, a stochastic oscillator crossed its moving average in their oversold territory. It means that uh, it means the end of the downtrend, and uh, it can help you to close your trade. Of course, it would be great if you can close your trade. I mean, your short trade here on this level. But actually, according to my experience and to my practice, it's very difficult to take the whole movement. And it will be a great success if you just close the trade here on this candle. Just looking for this indicator to cross its signal line. The next type is volume indicators. This type of uh, these types of indicators show the volume of trades behind a particular price movement, which can be extremely beneficial because the price movement backed up by high volume. Uh, it's a much stronger signal than the price movement based on low volume. You can use uh, if you trade Forex, you can use tick volume indicator, which shows how many transactions were made during a certain period of time. And this is how you can identify that the price movement was ended. For example, here. 
if the volume decreases, you see the period of high volume, you can make a suggestion that the market um, so can be in a trend, it can be a trendy market, and yes, it's true, the market goes down, and when the volume is low, uh, the market is usually in flat. There are some exclusions in night hours, like you may see here. It's because there is no liquidity during night hours. Okay, and the last category is volatility indicators. And uh, these uh, indicators usually, you know, generally, they use ranges to show the behavior of the price and the volume behind any movements. And uh, common examples include Bollinger Bands, Average True Range, and Envelopes. Envelopes. Okay, and increasing volatility can prove that the market can continue its new trend, but if uh, the volatility decreases, it means that the market will become flat. Let me show you. For example, this is a Bollinger Bands indicator, and uh, it's a high range. And we may see that the market was in trend, but, but when uh, the range was shrinked, we've noticed it, the market was in a flat, or so my market was flat, and it means that the trend ended. So if you traded this trend, uh, for example here, you should close your trade and exit the market, because there is um, the less probability that the market will continue its uh, uptrend. The market uh, is likely to be flat for some hours and then uh, it can change the trend, it can be downtrend, so uh, it will be better for you to close the trade here. Okay, what are other ways to exit the market? Of course, they are stop losses and take profits. Uh, yeah, it's the common way to exit the market. It is uh, is to set a stop loss and take profit. Just set them and don't close the trade until the price reaches any of them. Uh, the first thing that a trader should consider is that the stop loss must be placed at a logical level. This means uh, a level that will both informs us when our trade signal is no longer valid and that actually makes sense in the surrounded market structure. There are two possible ways to set stop losses and take profits. Uh, of course, you can use uh, fixed amounts of pips for both. For example, 30 pips for stop loss and 30 pips plus spread for take profit. But uh, these amounts should be calculated using the history of your trades. For example, uh, you noticed that um, often when you open a trade, the market can move up to 25 pips in opposite direction. Then just set your stop loss at 30 pips and it will be okay. Let me show you an example. For example, you open a trade here. This is um, 30 pips stop loss and this is take profit. 30 pips plus spread.
Okay, so it's a common practice, and even me uh, used this. Uh, I use fixed stop losses and take profits, um, especially when I trade uh, using expert advisors. I always set a fixed stop loss or fixed take profit, but um, sometimes, uh, depending on the strategy, I can close my trade earlier with the profit, but uh, if it's a losing um, if it's a losing trade, I prefer to close it by using a fixed stop loss. Okay, so if your strategy is good with a fixed stop losses and take profits, just use them. Uh, but uh, I also want you to show another way to set a, a stop loss and to take profit. Uh, sometimes you can also set stop losses and take profits using support and resistance levels. Um, and it's a common practice to set a stop loss a few points lower the previous low. For example, you opened a trade here. It's a green arrow, so you opened it here and you decided to you f you found the previous low, which is here, and you set stop low uh, the stop loss five pips lower than this level, and this level is unlikely to be reached. Let's see what happened. The market went up, then down, but uh, the price didn't reach your stop loss, and then an uptrend continued. So. If you don't know where to set a stop loss, just find uh, the previous minimum and uh, set the stop loss five pips below. If we're speaking about take profits, we can do the same, but uh, uh, let's imagine that there is a resistance level, or we can call it a previous high here on the first uh, on the left side of the picture, uh, and you decided to open a long trade here, and you don't know where to set a take profit. Just find the previous high and be sure that it's a resistance level, and uh, set your take profit five pips below this level, because if you if you set it on the same level as um, as the previous high wars, uh, it won't be reached like you may see it here. For example, uh, the price didn't touch the resistance level. So, but if you set it five pips below, then your trade will be close with the profit. And here again. Just don't set your um, take profits above uh, the resistance level if, if you're speaking about a long trade. Okay, there are also some other ways to exit the trade and uh, let me show you one of them that I use. It is called Rainbow. Uh, I'll show you how to use it. It's um, open the M15 time frame of Euro USD chart, uh, but you can also apply this strategy uh, for British pound against American dollar or Australian dollar against American. Uh, the only thing I don't recommend you to apply this strategy on cross courses what you should do. You should set five moving average indicators with different periods. Uh, so the red one is, has, um, it's five, orange is 14, yellow is 21, 
uh, green is 65, and the blue one is, has a 120 period. And all of these moving averages are using open prices, and uh, they are based on the exponential model. Okay, so how to identify that it's flat? If all five moving averages are in a very low range, five to ten pips, for at least three, four hours, it means that this market is flat, was flat. And uh, the common rule tells us that the trend follows after each trend, and every trend, every trend ends with a flat. But thus, uh, here you should be prepared for a new trend. You can see uh, that it happened in the dedicated area here, and then the market, uh, the new trend started. It was an uptrend. Okay, if all moving averages are located in the right order, for example, uh, red one is higher than orange, orange is higher than yellow, uh, yellow is higher than green, and uh, green is higher than blue, it means that you should wait for uptrend continuation. And just remember that this is a very accurate signal and you may base your strategy on it. Now I want to run my MetaTrader. And uh, just a few statistics here. So just wait for a few seconds because uh, then I want to tell you about about uh, the duration of the trade okay but anyway I have I have a template which I called rainbow and if you apply uh, this template to your chart you can see that uh, all moving averages are automatically set on your chart and Moreover, there is a stochastic indicator there. Just you can use it. For example, we can we can see now that now it's a downtrend on EURUSD. And the market was flat. And only at that moment another downtrend started, a new downtrend. Okay, so let's now speak about uh, trade, uh, the duration of the trade. One of the most effective ways to close a trade is to identify what is its ideal duration. Uh, to do this, you should work with your trading history and just calculate the statistics. If you remember, uh, just wait a second, if you remember my, the expert advisor that I demonstrated to you on my first webinar about um, uh, ex expert advisor optimization in MetaTrader 4, uh, it, it is called Stomper. And uh, I just want you. I, I just want now to demonstrate to you um, how to calculate the statistics using the expert advisor. Let's assume that I use this strategy, which is based on, um, um, which is uh, inside the Stomper. I, I will use this strategy on Euro against Swiss franc, and uh, let's just click start. and wait for a while. Okay, so this is the results. 
this is uh, yeah this is the result this is the graph by the way uh, I ran this expert advisor from uh, July to till now and uh, I used the fixed lot and it earned about $100 of course it's um, it's just a test and I can't guarantee that it will, will it will work uh, it will bring the same amount in a real account it's uh, of course it depends on your broker but it can be profitable if you optimize the settings from time to time okay so what I want now um, I this is the history of my trades I just copied it to my Excel file and uh, let's just analyze this is uh, for example this is the first trade and it opened at uh, midnight and it was closed in 20 minutes so the duration of this trade was 20 minutes the duration of the second trade was one hour and uh, 18 minutes. Uh, the second trade uh, lasts for two hours, 34 minutes, and uh, it was uh, not successful. Just It didn't bring any profit. It was a losing trade. Okay. Well, let's check what else do we have here. Another losing trade, and you see that the duration of this trade was nine hours and nine minutes. Okay, another losing trade, and again, the duration is eight hours, 46 minutes. And two more losing trades. Uh, the duration of the first one is 4 hours 34 minutes and uh, uh, this uh, this trade's duration is 8 hours 44 minutes so what can you see you can easily notice that the duration of all profitable trades is less than 2 hours usually it's only a few minutes but if the trade is opened for I don't know four hours or more it can cause a loss that's why you can ask yourself why not to close the trade two hours after it was opened it can make your results better and uh, your strategy will be more profitable if you use an expert advisor like me just add one more function that will close the trade in two or three hours after you open it. If you trade manually, just do it manually if you see that the trade is still open, uh, but uh, the optimal closing time has passed. So your task is to just collect the statistics uh, using your trading strategy just export uh, your trading history to the Excel and then you can uh, calculate the duration of all your losing trades and uh, your winning trades and maybe after that you can make a conclusion to close the trade after two, three, four hours or maybe a few days if you're a day trader or I mean medium term trader just analyze the statistics and it really works I call it a statistical approach and I, I definitely like it because um, the stomper is the strategy that um, just a basic strategy uh, and not other strategies that I use on my real account has so many filters and one of them is the duration of the trade and of course they work better than stomper so for example, if you apply such a filter to your uh, trading strategy, it will be definitely better. Uh, 
Okay, so I believe you will have uh, questions regarding the statistical approach, how to um, how to notice the ideal t uh, duration of the trade. If so, just write questions. I will try to answer. And it doesn't matter whether you trade using expert advisors or manually. Just uh, upload your history to Excel and calculate manually. Okay, uh, so what else? Uh, when else do you need to close a trade? Uh, you should close a trade in case of the change of the market conditions. What does it mean? It means that some other factors begin to affect the market. It can be fundamental factors or some political factors. Well, for example, what if uh, North Korea starts to attack American forces in Guam? What will happen? It will definitely affect all financial markets. And if you, for example, uh, heard such a news, just close your trade. So this uh, fundamental or political news usually uh, mean that the market becomes more volatile and less predictable. You may also notice that the spreads are widened in this case. And again, I kindly recommend you to close all your trades and wait for better options to enter the market. Okay, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them now. Uh, so, what else? I'm going to run a poll. So, how satisfied are you from the webinar? One is bad and five is excellent. Please uh, vote. So, the poll was launched. Okay. So, just if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, now, what else? By the way, uh, now I just want to show you uh, just how the Stomper worked during uh, this period when I, when the, when it was first time when I demonstrated it to you. Okay, let's. Uh, it's euro against British pound. Let's just start and check while you are voting. Okay, let's look at the chart, uh, at the graph. So, for example, if you apply this expert advisor on uh, euro, euro against British pound on the, in the early July, you would you would earn about three hundred. Oh wait, total net profit is just seventy five dollars using the fixed lot. But it looks like there is no losing trades. Oh yeah, there is one loss trade. Yeah, it was one. Okay, so there is a question from Rena. Uh, Uh, so, Rena is asking about Bollinger Bands. Okay, so what is uh, Bollinger Bands? Um, usually it's just a moving average which is shifted down and up. You can just uh, see uh, its parameters. Mm. 
Okay. It's bands period, bands shift, and bands deviation. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, this indicator to know the formula, just uh, mm -hmm. So as, as for me, I don't know the exact formula, formula but I use this indicator sometimes. Uh, uh, as for me, I, if speaking about volatility indicators, I prefer ATR, which is average to range. Let me find it. ATR, yes, here it is. Yeah, it's just demonstrate the uh, uh, the real volatility. For example, if uh, the indicator is low, it means that the market is in flat. Okay, so. Uh, There are some problems with uh, the poll. Uh, just click on polls. It, so I just don't know how to demonstrate it to you, how I see it. Let, let me show using uh, the screenshot. Like this. Here is the polls and how satisfied are you from the webinar? Just click here. Okay, what else? Um, Okay, let me stop the poll. De Damien asked me, okay, uh, close the poll. Okay, I see. Um, let's check if there are any questions. There is. Wait a second. Uh -huh. Okay, the question is, are you familiar with the pivot point indicator for stop loss and take profit levels? I don't use this indicator. I um, so I don't have it now, and I can't explain to you now. Uh, as for me, I prefer to set stop losses and take profits manually. So uh, unfortunately, in this webinar, I can't uh, show you this indicator. I but I I know it, and uh, I tried to use it, but. But actually, I didn't like it. Okay, just one more question about Bollinger Bands. Uh, I want to know the moving average of Bollinger Bands. So you mean the period? The period was 20 on, on my chart. Okay, so let me show you. Uh, in, indicators. It's uh, bands, and the period is 20. Okay, now you see it.
Okay, so we are back. If you have any questions, just uh, don't hesitate to ask them. Um, so if there is no questions, uh, I just want to show you uh, how the Stomper works. It was the topic of my first webinar. So let's choose another pair, like Euro against Canadian dollar, and check how it works. There is Yeah, and uh, if we apply this strategy on uh, euro against Canadian dollar, it also works. Uh, yeah, it had only 29 trades, but it's a scalper. It shouldn't earn more, but uh, it should uh, have less uh, losing trades. Okay, when will be when this webinar will be posted online? Oh, I hope tomorrow. I'm not so sure, but I hope tomorrow. Uh, maybe the Damien, uh, Damien will answer this question. What is the name of the broker you are using? Uh, Jake, sorry, I can't say the name um, of the broker I used, but you can see that this terminal was uh, download it from the developer from MetaQuotes. So here on Forex Boat, we don't uh, we don't promote any uh, any Forex brokers. It's um, it's your choice to find a broker. It's. Okay, so uh, you, Michael, so you missed the webinar to, today, but uh, it will be definitely available for viewing because <laughs> because I'm absolutely sure that I clicked on start recording the webinar, so the webinar is recorded. So does anybody wants to ask a question? Okay, so we will wait for one more minute, for, for, for one minute more, and if there is no question, uh, then I will end the webinar. Anyway, thank you for joining. Uh, it was about 30 attendees here, and that's great, because uh, last time it was only a few of them. Uh, thank you, Paywell. Yes, Michael, so this webinar will be, will be uploaded to Forex Boat. You can watch it there. Okay, thank you all. Uh, thank you guys for coming. So, mm, I just turned on my camera and I just want to thank you all guys and I just want to remind that the topic of our webinar was uh, strategies to exit the market and how long to hold the trade. So thank you for joining. See you next webinar.